Hello, everybody. Give me a thumbs up, wave something. Let me know you can see me and hear me. Hi, Deborah. Hi, Pam. Hi, Teresa. Hi, Ann. Hi, Granny. Happy Halloween, everyone. Y'all ready for the trick-or-treaters? Got your candy for the trick-or-treaters and got your candy. Okay, remember, you have to buy your own candy. Today's not going to be a big, big class. We're just going to learn to put our tatting on our clothes and faces like that. Hi, Zen. They make sugar-free candy that's okay to eat. As long as it's dark chocolate, it's good for you. I'm just saying. I need to go get a haircut. You got some caramels. Oh, I don't like caramel at all. Hi, Robin. Dennis likes caramel. I'm not crazy about caramel. This is the time of year I used to get candy apples, the red ones. And uh, I hadn't had any in a while. He got me some at the store the other day and went to slice it down. And Needless to say, they were rotted on the inside. They don't make candy apples like they used to. They used to be good. When I have a hankering for candy, it's usually chocolate candies. Hi, Jeremy. Are you ready for all the ghouls and goblins, the little bitty ones? We was going to put Mia in a tutu and take her for a walk, but she had the tutu off before we get out the door. So, yeah, she ain't going dressed up. She don't feel good. She hasn't felt good in a couple of days. I think her allergies, and my, well, I know my allergies is flared up. Where we lived at, before we went on the rig, there was a whole truckload of kids in the neighborhood. And all Dennis did was walk up to the door to come in the house, and it was like we got bombarded with 50 kids. And uh, mom was giving them away pennies. Everybody got a penny or a handful of pennies in their bucket. I thought that was funny. Hi, Marianne. Happy Halloween. I got treats for y'all today. Eye candy. That's what you get today. Some eye candy. How cool is that? But I'm going to show you how to sew your tatting on your fabric first. Get the lesson over with. And then we can go look at the eye candy. Because the eye candy pertains to what we're going to do from here until the end of this series of classes. Hi, Mary. And uh, some of you may think it's advanced. It's really not. It's considered an intermediate technique. However, you can get more professed if you want to step up and master the technique. Now, that's all up to you. Don't ask me why my light went out. It just went out. We have a ghost. Weird things are happening today. None of our Bluetooth is working inside this room. 
just this room. You leave the room, you got Bluetooth. You are in this room, you don't have Bluetooth. We don't know why. We had it yesterday. Today we don't have it. It disappeared. <laughs> so I just say we got a ghost. But we've moved. We're at another campground. And these people blow my mind. I've got 17 pull-through sites just around my camper. And when we called to make sure we had a pull-through, there was, well, let me check and see if I've got one. There's 17 vacant around me. Okay. <laughs> How hard can it possibly be? Hi, Eve. We got about seven minutes. Let everybody get in here. I've been looking at y'all's purdies on the site. I sure have. I made some comments. I have to say, a lot of you all are doing better than... I expected you really, really honing in on your skills. And I like that. It makes me feel good. We'll get some teachers and designers out of this group yet. Hi, Judy. Happy Halloween. When you have allergies, they irritate you. No, they don't make shuttles for cats and they don't make shuttles for dogs. Sorry, Ollie. Mia gets up in my lap and she sticks her nose right in the middle of my tanning bag and she roots. She doesn't take nothing out, she just roots around. Just to check out what's in there. Hi, Carol. <laughs> Ollie just wants the three. That's with most cats. I tell you what you ought to do is get a bag of them feathers and string them on a thread and hang it from the ceiling fan. Just let it run slow. You want to laugh. That is hilarious because they're trying to get the feathers. It catches their eye and they can't catch it because it's on the ceiling fan. That's what my son used to do to his cats. <laughs> Nancy, hello. Thank you, Nancy. Nancy donated this week. She does every week to help support the classes. We have several that, you know, donate every week. Marianne donates every week. Uh, oh, I can't think right off the top of my head. There's several. He eats feathers. You don't want him to eat feathers. That wouldn't be good. <laughs> Mia tried to eat a uh, crouton once, and she choked on the crouton. I had to reach down and get it out of her throat because she knows she's not supposed to have human food. So she grabbed it, and it was going down before I could say no. And it was bigger than her throat allowed. 
that scared me. So after that, she hadn't done that. I think it scared her too. Sometimes they have to try things and see, is it going to be okay or is it not? We got about three more minutes. That is scary. Hi, Jess. She's my baby girl. She's all, she's also my service dog. Well, I'm sorry to hear that, Ann. I'm glad you're back. Is the flu going away? I've heard a lot of people getting it and it ain't going away too easy. Of course, it's a new strain every year. So the medicine they're giving you to this year is for the flu last year. Uh, Mom went to her doctors and her nurse went to her church and she told mom, she said, don't get the flu shot. Mom said, why? And she said, because they forgot to put the medicine in it. All you're getting is the placebo. But they were giving these shots out to people and there was no medicine in it and they was charging for it. Hi, Bev. Hi, Pam. Yeah, you're going to have to get stern. And thank you, Deborah, for that super chat. Um, I would tap her on the nose and tell her no, and that worked. Now, some dogs are more stubborn. Her breed is really easy to train. I had her house broke in three days. Hi, Arlene. Yeah, that would help. <laughs> I liked your comment on the video of last week. That was very helpful. Thank you. I had mentioned that in the class, but having it in writing makes it even easier for the people that aren't an actual student to know what I was talking about. Because we do have a lot that come in and watch just the videos or they'll in, attend class and they're not uh, enrolled students. Most of them sit on the wings and don't say much. But I know they're there. <laughs> That's great, Eve. That is great. They tend to mesh well. If you've got an older dog with a new puppy, the older dog will do one of two things. He will get mad at it and growl, or he'll try to be its mama or daddy. Hi, Jackie. How you doing? <laughs> All right, folks. It's three o'clock. Hi, Mary. We got some coming in. We'll give them a few more minutes and then we'll get started because I don't want to hold y'all up. I'm sure you're going to have trick-or-treaters at your house and about four o'clock they're going to start nah, 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 and they're going to want their candy. So we got to get the class done so you all can take care of your trick-or-treaters. For those of you that are a little younger set, you can go out for your evening, for your Halloween parties and parties at work, things like that. Yeah, you are right, Arlene. Uh, Asia, bless her heart. <laughs> Mia would do something, and Asia knew Mia wasn't supposed to, and she'd just call off and box her one, and Mia go flying, you know, and Mia's like, what'd you do that for? <laughs> she didn't do it again. So, yeah, they do train. They do help train. An enrolled student is one that, um, we've got information, your email and stuff, and you get an email from us letting you know what's going on in the classes and so forth. Thank you so much for that super chat, Mary. Um, and if you're enrolled, you also can go on our Facebook group. It's a private group. 
We don't allow people to come in there and sell all kinds of stuff. We have some people that sell shuttles that are handmade. When they have new stock, we'll let them advertise. But that's the only time they can advertise. And we have to approve it. So we, you know, have a lot of educated tatters in the group. And they are very, very helpful. If you've got a question, you throw it out there, you're going to get 50 answers real quick. Okay. Yeah, that's the way to do it. That's the way to do it. All right. So everybody ready to let's get going. Uh, today, we're going to give you some eye candy that's the onset of what's coming up on Thursday. I wanted to go ahead and teach today the um, way to, the different ways you can sew. Hi, Pasha. Thank you, Mary. Um, the different ways you can sew your tatting or put your tatting on fabric. Now, sewing your tatting on fabric, remember this. If you use bleach, it's going to fade your tatting and it's going to fade into your clothing. So you can't use bleach because it also is going to eat the cotton fibers. All right. Another thing, it makes it get all icky when you've got it attached to your clothes on a permanent basis. Just know that that will happen. But if you sew it right, it won't do that so bad. Okay, you can control the ickies, all right? Um, if you're going to use tatting on a hanky, my advice, sew it on. So that if something happens to the hanky, you can cut the tatting off. If you tat it on to the hanky, something happens to the hanky, say it gets stained or something, you've lost the tatting, okay? So, but the choice is yours, and it depends on what it's for and what the occasion is for. So today I'm going to show you several different ways that you can join your tatting to fabric and doilies and stuff like that, make the doilies. Handy Hands carries the handkerchiefs with the preset holes that are evenly spaced, so you don't have to do it, okay? They also uh sell the dollies that have the holes evenly spaced they got round and oval the oval's about this big hi janella and you add your tatting around okay that centerpiece is linen okay and the reason that it's such a small piece is you're supposed to use it just for like you're going to sit a vase on it okay a vase sitting on tatting, it's unlevel. Okay. So if it's got water in it or something, you take a chance of it getting knocked over and ruining the tatting, the table, and everything. So that piece is there. It's flat, and it's not going to mess with your tatting. But your tatting is going to show around it. A guy just pulled up across the street. Hmm. Amazing how she can hear him. Um, so anyway, if you put your tatting on it and something happens and you didn't sew, uh, you didn't sew it, you tatted it on, you've lost that big dolly you made for that table. Okay. And you don't want to lose your tatting. You just don't. Your big projects, you want to sew them on. Okay. I know it's a hassle sewing. But it's worth its weight in gold in the end. Think how long it took you to work on that masterpiece. And the spill of a glass of red wine's just ruined it. Whereas if you sew it on, okay, and the centerpiece is the one that's stained, your tatting is saved and you cut it off and put it on another centerpiece. You just go to handy hands and order another centerpiece. You see what I'm saying? So, you know, pick your battles there. The battleground is only as bad as you make it. Okay? So, with that said, 
We're going to go over here and I'm going to show you the different ways. And then I'm going to show you all some eye candy for next week's or next Thursday's class that we're going to take all the way through until you got it. And yes, you can do it. So don't argue with me. All right. I know you can. So let me switch cameras. And there we go. Can y'all see my desktop? Hi, Linda. How you been? Okay. Y'all see my desktop? My parties out here? Well, I'm going to show you something. This right here is one of the hankies that you can get. This is an older one. This is before she started the ones with the embroidery on the corners. Now, the ones that she's got that's embroidered on the corners, the embroidery is the same color as the, the hanky. You can change that if you want. They do make... Um, colored what am i trying to say inks and stuff that you can use on it that won't fade into your cotton you'll have to check into it um there's different things you can use on that embroidery or you could take it out and embroider it yourself or leave it in as a padding and embroider over it okay variety of things but if you'll look can you see these holes see the holes in the ends that is where you attach your tatting. Now, remember this. You're not going to use every one of them holes. You're just not. Because you do a ring. Are you going to get another ring in there? Unless you're using really small thread. We are talking 120. You are not going to use every hole in this hanky. However, this hanky laid out on the diagonal. Do you see where I'm going? That could be a dolly. That could be the center point. That could be the center point in your table. Okay. And she sells these in many different colors. All right. Go check them out. Handy hands. All right. So to get these little holes in here, she used a probably a machine to do it. Most things are done by machine today. But I got some tools here that are going to blow your mind. This belonged to my mother-in-law. As you can see, it was very well loved. It has already begun to rust. I got to clean it up. Okay. But that's exactly what this tool is used for. Yeah, I, I was going to get to that, Arlene. Just give me a second. You're jumping ahead of me. <laughs> okay. Anyway, that's what this tool here is used for. And you would run it across your fabric. And you could bear down on this cup to force it down in the fabric to put your holes in. And if you look, these holes fit that little wheel. And it's sharp. It's still got some sharpness to it. Okay, so it's not done. Okay, it's got some life left in it. You can also use, if you get, one of these little jewels. How many of you know what this is? I know there's some people in here that sew. Okay. And you remember the like carbon paper you would put on your fabric and tracing paper and you trace out a pattern? That's what this is, a tracing wheel. But it has sharp points. How many of you, when you bear down on that tracing wheel, it would poke holes in that tracing paper? Okay. Right. It's a tracing wheel. Now, back in the day, you used this, you ran it across your fabric, and it would literally cut holes in the tracing paper. And that tracing paper still had some use, but it had all these holes in it. Okay. So... You can use one of these tracing wheels, and they still carry them at the, uh, like, Joann's, Hobby Lobby, places that carry fabric. It'll be over in your sewing section. They still carry these. This is an old one. It came from my mother-in-law stuff, and this has a little dowel that you can pop out and replace the blade. No, it's not. 
It's not a screen tool. It's a tracing wheel. This thing's probably 75 years old. In fact, Buckle is the name of the brand name. A Z Buckle. Let's see what it's got in there. It's got seven E Z Buckle. That's what it says. I have no idea. So, but that is a tracing wheel. And you go and you run it across your carbon paper. It would trace on your fabric. You could use that. It may or may not put the holes in. Try it. Okay. But this one is sharp. It'll put holes in it. Okay. So that said, another thing you can use. An owl. Awl. Some people call them an awl. Uh, how many of you do paper crafts? and you use the pokey tool. They call it a pokey tool, and actually it's a very skinny awl, okay? And you could go through and poke these holes. Teresa Oren, a dough cutter. That would work, okay? So there's many different tools. Again, tatters, we use every tool we can find from any category. I mean, we even use fishing tools. Okay. Right. The all used in book binding because it's small holes. You can use that. Okay. And it will make these holes. The problem is when you're doing that, you got to make sure that they're even. If they're not even, you've got a problem because everything's going to be off going down. That's why if you can find a tool to use, use the tool. That way they are evenly spaced. All right. So with that said, now we got this piece of tatting right here. Okay. We want to attach this tatting on to this. Now we can sew it on. And everybody has their own method of how they want to sew their tatting on. Okay. Mine, I don't, I'm not a seamstress. I sew, but I'm not a seamstress. It's called YouTube. <laughs> That's where I learned to sew. But what I do, and I made a hanky for a friend of mine that was getting married. And I made the trim, it was a white hanky, and I made the trim in her colors that she used in her wedding. And what I did was I come up through the hole, eat up there, I have to bend over because I can't see, I'm blind as a bat, and I pull my tail up, okay? Now I'm going to go through just whatever pico I want it to hang from. All right, go back down in the next hole. All right, now you want to pull it tight, but not too tight where it crimps. All right, see? And what you're going to do is you're going to walk your tatting down. So on the other side, you've got this tail. You notice I do not have a knot in that tail. If I tie a knot in that tail at this point, it is going to pull that tatting in. We don't want that. We want it to lay on there as if it's not sewn on. Okay? So, you want to lay that tail right there. And when you come into that next hole right beside where you went in, where you come in at on the back side, pull down. And you're going to lock that tail in between. And as you're sewing along, you are sewing your tail in. Okay? And you want to leave your tail a pretty good length. Because the minute you wash this, even if you hand wash it, because it's a cotton thread on a linen cloth, this thread's going to do this while you're washing it. When it does that, it locks those fibers in with 
what's going around it. Okay? Just like with um, crochet. You know how you weave your tails in? That's what you're going to do with this. You're going to weave it back and forth. And when we get up here, you're going to reverse that and pull it back through. And I'm going to show you the trick. Okay? So, we're going to go up here. See, we're back in to the next pico. Come through. Pull it down. And this does take time. Okay? I'm not going to lie to you and say, oh, it's an easy piece of to do things. No. It's going to take time. Anything worth doing is worth spending the time that it takes to do it right. My grandfather used to tell me years ago when I was a kid, if you don't have the time to do some, oops, pulled that through wrong. If you don't have the time to do it right the first time, how do you have time to do it right the second? So think about that. While I straighten up my mess for doing it wrong. Because I come in the wrong side. Ah! And that's okay. We can do that. Because we can fix it. Pull that back out. I went up through the hole instead of down through the hole. Boy, I'm an airhead, ain't I? It's just tying knot in it while we're at it, you know. I don't know what it's hung on. I think I went and split the ply there. Probably so. Probably so. I'll fix it. All right. Now. There we go. We got it. Now, on this one, to take it back, I'll show you a trick. Say we have this all wove, woven up to here. Y'all got one of them fancy little doodads called a needle threader? How many y'all got needle threaders? Let me find one. I know y'all got one. Everybody has a needle threader. Any hands puts these out too. They come in three different sizes. Okay. You want to run that needle threader up through your stitches, but you're going to go like this, like a snake. Opposite where you've woven. If thread's woven in from this side, you want to go from this side with your needle threader. And you're going to grab the tail of that thread and pull it back through. Okay. So. You can do this, and it's real easy. Once you get it pulled back through, it's locked in. It's not going nowhere. Just be careful, and don't crimp our tatting. We don't want it to go like these. If it goes like this, it doesn't look good, okay? So use your needle threaders, and sew your tatting on. As you can see, it's on there, okay? It's sewed on. It's just not locked in. So, yeah, you can use your needle threader many different ways, okay? Uh, Handy Hand sells one that comes with the uh, Handy Hand's tatting needles. It's the black one with the long wire. Those work great for weaving. All right, what was clear? Do you connect one side of the tatting to the hanky? Okay, yes, you only can lay your tatting on the side, the outer edge, okay? This is the inside. You'll see it's rolled right there. Let me show you. It's real hard to tell, but you can see that the fabric is rolled over and sewn in these holes. That's why I say this is machine done. This is not hand done. Okay, so you want this to be the back side. So your tatting is going to be on the front side. All right. The other thing you can do 
is you can crochet your tatting on. I'm going to move that out of the way. Okay. And it's just a single stitch. Now, okay, folks, I don't crochet. I used to crochet many moons ago. I don't anymore. But I'd have my crochet loaded up, ready to go, and I'm trying to use a tatting needle to crochet with. And yes, you can do that. Okay? And you come back and you do this. Pull it through. And you'd crochet all the way around your edging. Then you can come in and come up underneath the stitches and sew your tatting on. Okay. You're right, Linda. I'm only showing how to do it. Okay. Uh, I have these designated for something. I can't tell you. I can't tell you. Okay. But you can crochet your edging on. After you crochet it on, you can sew up underneath the crocheted edge and add your tatting. Your tatting is only going to reflect on one side, okay, when you sew it on. Now, you want to tat it on. Well, here's what you do when you tat it on. I have a ring started. I'm fixing to put a pico in there. You lay your hanky on there. You go down through the loop. You grab it, make sure your hanky's facing the way you want it to face. Okay. And you join to it just as you would join to anything you're tatting. You're just doing a basic join. And you pull it down, lay it into place, and that's how it's done. Okay. You see that? It's just a join. This way, if you do this, it's real easy to do it. Okay, this is the easiest way to add your tatting. Just remember, when you do that and something happens to the hanky or whatever you're attaching it to, and you want to keep your tatting, this is what you got to do. You got to cut it off. So, the ball is in your court at that point. Which way do you want to do it? You know, you want to put it on with tatting? You want, as you're tatting, fine. If you want to put it on sewing, fine. It's whatever floats your boat. Okay. Uh, like I said, if I was going to put this on something like a handkerchief, I would sew it on. I would not put it on as a tat. Because then you lose that tatting, okay? And if you think it's easy to sew tatting on and then you can do it in jig time, rethink that doll. It doesn't happen in jig time. Because, first of all, you got to count all your holes, okay? Because as you can see, just by this demonstration here, how many of those picos are you going to catch? Well, then you've got another piece you're going to put here that's going to come in here. How many hole difference do you need between the two? You see? So it's not as easy to sew it on as you would think. It's really not. But it's worth its weight in gold because you can save your tatting. Now, if you don't care, and it's no big deal, you can tat as you put it on. That's up to you. Yeah, it, <clears throat> it can get to be a headache. Now, your last option for sewing. Get your sewing machine out. Lay your tatting on here the way you want it to go. And then you'd lay your next piece and your next piece. And you would pin them on where you want things to go. Okay. And then you can straight stitch right to your fabric. Now, if it was on an article of clothing, that's exactly what I would do. 
and I would catch every pico on that piece. If I was going to put this on there, and that was a shirt, and I wanted it to stay, I would take my sewing machine and I would go th right through every pico so it holds it down in place. Once you do the outer edge, everything's kosher. Then all you got to do is come in and hit these with needle and thread if you want to. You can just leave it and let it go. And when you wash it, just, you know, take in picos and lay them back out there where they belong. Okay, so that's how you add your tatting to your fabric. Is there any questions on what I demonstrated? Make sure if you're going to put tatting on fabric, your caps are all facing out. If you do front side, back side. If not, your caps need to be facing out on your rings because in traditional tatting, the caps are on the rings, not on your chains. And the caps are what show the picos and the stitching the best. All right. So any questions? Hit me with the best ones. Have y'all got it? No questions. Wow, that's a good class. I didn't confuse anybody. Now, <clears throat> this is one of the hankies you get from Handy Hands. Now, you can go to Amazon and they will sell you a 10-pack, a 12-pack, whatever, different colors of handkerchiefs. And there's no holes. So what are you going to do? Make your own. Use your tool, whatever tool of choice. And what you want to do is follow along beside that hem. You do not want to run it on the hem. You will break the threads that have it hemmed up. Yeah, you can hand sew it on. But remember, you're attaching that hand sewing. And hand sewing doesn't last in a washer. Yep, attaching a medallion to a t-shirt pocket, you would sew it on. Fabric glue is going to wash out. Yeah, you can use coilless pins to baste, or bulb pins is what some people call them. Uh, stitch markers. Yeah. Pam, you're right. It's machine sew. That's what I say. You've got to pick your battles on that. Exactly. Yeah. And glue makes it stiff. I've got fabric glue, and it does tend to make it stiff. Now, I'm going to give you a trick that I use, and I use this when I am sewing the bags that I make to put the trim on. There's two ways I can do that. One is, let me see if I can get it. One of these. This right here, that's a glue stick, okay? I take that glue stick and I run it around on my fabric where I need something to stay put so it doesn't shift when I'm sewing. And when I wash it, the glue stick comes out, but it doesn't seep on the rest of it. It dissolves. This is the one that I use, okay? Scotch puts it out, okay? And it washes out without leaving a residue. Basting glue, yeah. Fabric glue is meant to be flexible, but Mary, after a while, it dries and it gets hard. Fabri-Tac is the one fabric glue that I have used. And whatever I use it on, it after about six months, it's hardened that thread. It just doesn't like cotton. 
for some reason, it does not like cotton. If you use it on polyester, it hates that. Okay. Yeah. Exactly, Arlene. Test your fabric glue. Test whatever you're going to use first. But sewing is better. Okay. So, now are we ready for the eye candy, folks? Because we got some terrific eye candy coming up here. So that y'all can see what we're going to work on. Okay. You ready? I'm going to peel it back. And y'all see all this prettiness. Guess what we're doing? Mary, we've learned typos, typo, typosis long ago. We learned it in the chat room. <laughs> this, my friends, is called Ankar's tatting. It is layered tatting. Okay. This is an Ankar's bracelet. Do you see how it moves as I bend it? Now, most times when you do Ankar's, you will have a second layer on the back that gives it its strength. Okay. However, I didn't put it on there because if I want to wear this on one side, I can. If I want to wear it on the other side, I can. The beads show through either way. It's just how do you want to wear it? Okay. We're going to do this starting Friday. And I got news for you. A, intermediate. You know double stitch. You know joins. You can do this. Okay. This is Karina Mayfeld's earrings called the Wave. I've got authorization from her and the pattern to do the earrings, the bracelet, and the necklace. Okay, the Christmas tree ornaments. You don't know how to start with a chain. I sure will. I sure will. All right, now, these are the earrings that I was going to teach for uh, tat days and couldn't go to, I couldn't really, I couldn't even walk that day. So let's just don't even get there. But this is the earrings. These are called ring on ring earrings. In here is a crystal and we have a ceramic bead. These things you'd think are heavy. They're not. This isn't heavy. None of this is heavy. You don't get into heavy until you start layering. Okay. This pair of earrings. See them? Is this pattern. This is a flower brooch. Okay. This is the earring. Now, mind you, this is done in 80 thread. This is done in 10 thread. Do you see the difference between the two? What size beads? Well, you're going to get all that information. I'm going to send it out to you today because you need to gather up your supplies. All right. Because we're going to start, probably going to start with these earrings. Or you tell me which one you want to start with. This one, I don't have permission to share the pattern, but there is a video on YouTube. I will have to locate it that shows you how to do it by the owner of this pattern. She's a foreign lady, okay, but I can show you the technique, all right? And that's what we're going to focus on mainly is the technique, all right? With Ankars, your larger beads, like this one, okay, like the center beads on here, the crystals, this bead, they're sewn in. They are not tatted in. You do not fight those large beads when you're tatting. You sew them in with the tails. Ha! Guess what? We get rid of our tails the easy way. Well, don't worry about it, Mary. Don't worry about it. The technique is really 
what you need to hone in on. I will show you on video how to add the beads and go through everything you need to go through. Thursday, the main thing that we are going to do is learn the technique. And cars is not this. It, just close your eyes to this. This is not and cars. And cars is the actual technique to do this. Everybody thinks, oh, it's and cars jewelry. It is and cars jewelry, but it's a technique that you're learning. It's just like the split chain, the split ring, the ring, the chain, the Catherine will join, the blipless join. It is a technique. Okay. And once you get the hang of it, you can make all kinds of stuff and you can design exactly it all depends on the thread size this is size 80 and this is size 10 and they're the same exact pattern i use smaller beads here than i did here see this one here Karina's got everything laid out how to do it, okay? And I made several pairs of these, and I think I got another pair up there. And I, what I was doing was making them, Mom loved them, so I made them to match it with her outfits. So, yeah, I, I kept them because I loved them too. Spell it, and cards, A-N-K-A-R-S. And its initials. We'll go over all that when we are back in class on Thursday. But this is your eye candy, so let's dream. Let's dream. This is what we're going to achieve. Now, how many of you all got daughters, granddaughters you want to make pretty jewelry for? For Christmas. They get something like this. Their eyeballs are going to pop. I am not kidding you. Every time I wear my Ankar's jewelry and go out just shopping, oh, where did you get those? I made them. How'd you make them? Okay. So, yeah, get prepared. People are going to want you to make some. <laughs> Daughter's nothing. You want it. All right. So, we can take the time to learn all these patterns if you all want. That's up to you. We can do them all because I will release all of them to you. All right. So, but we got to do the information part first. And then we can get into this. But by Thursday afternoon's ending class, you're going to be ready to come in Tuesday with beads in hand and thread in hand. All right. You don't need to purchase the pattern. I give you the pattern. Everything I show you for these classes, I share the patterns. This is the only one I can't share the pattern, but it's on YouTube and she walks you through step by step. But you need to know the technique in order to do this. If you don't know it, you're not going to understand her instruction because she's Russian. Okay, all you can do is follow her diagram and you've got to know how to join these things or it will not join correctly. All right. Now, I will send the patterns out to you all this evening. Okay, so you can start ordering your beads if you need to order them, uh, ordering your threads, whatever. You can use, this is done handy hands, Elizabeth thread. This one here is done with Ceylon threads, okay? This here is done with DMC thread. So there you go. You can use any kind of thread you want, but if you're going to wear it in water, remember it's going to stretch, okay? If you use cotton threads. The Ceylon threads, these they won't because they're nylon, all right? To work with the nylon threads, you won't use a shuttle. You'll use a needle. That's the only way to get your threads to lay right. 
Okay. This is done on shuttle. These are done on shuttle and these are done on shuttle as well as these. Okay. But you need to know the technique before you step up to this level with these. And we have a practice piece that you're going to get to play with this weekend. And I want to see, or tonight and tomorrow, you can see way the way it's all laid out, the way it's done by the practice piece. Stephanie Wilson did a wonderful, wonderful practice piece for us that's a hair bow. Yes, earrings are one shuttle. This is two shuttle. This is one shuttle. And this is one shuttle. I do believe. Let me see. Yeah, one shuttle. So there you go. All right. Now, you wanted me to show you how to start a chain without... Um, on that one pattern, okay, when you do this, i got to find my little hooks here, all my stuff, I got things helter-skeltered here, I just have to hunt, because I had to make room, we didn't unpack when we got here, so there you go, now, you can use a bulb pin for this, there's one, or a paper clip, it doesn't matter, whichever you prefer. If you're going to start a pattern with the chain, you need one or the other. Okay? I prefer to use a paper clip. What I do is just run the paper clip on my thread, just like that. That's what you're going to hold on to. Okay? I'm going to get enough thread so that I can show you how to start that chain. Wrap your hand for the chain. Hold the paper clip. See how I'm holding this? Hi, Aurora. Then you go with your stitches. Start your stitches. Put in as many as you need to. Okay? Once you get your stitches in, then you can remove that paper clip. All right. Pull on that just enough to tuck that pico in unless you need to use the pico. Okay. So, we got that. Joan. Yeah, C on it's C hyphen. I think it's what it is. A little up here. L O N. And you can get it from Jules Fiber. You can also get it from uh, Fire Mountain Gems. Many, many places you can get it. Pam, you should have the uh, at the web address for Marion's Fiber. That's fine. That's fine, Mary. I want you to learn. Now, when working with nylon thread, you got to really be mindful. Joan, did you see how I started that chain? It's there. See, it's still there. It's not going nowhere. Everybody see that? <laughs> Bye, Janella. I'll see you on Thursday. Is Joan still with us? See along with the shuttle will tear your shuttle up. It will eat away at the shuttle. It's got a very coarse uh, texture. Sure. I can show you. The way I wrap my hand for a chain is I take it, I wrap that 
around that finger and then back around the other finger. Okay. My tension is right here and these two wraps keep it tight. Okay. So let's see that again. Go across the middle finger, around your ring finger, the back side of your pinky and around and grab. And everything lays like it's supposed to. Do you got it? Joan, did you get it? Joan. Did y'all see how I started that chain? This is what they call a dead chain. You're very welcome, Judy. You're very welcome. Uh, the way you do a dead chain is you just use your paper clip. Okay. Put it on there. And you hold the paper clip. Wrap your hand. Pat yourself. Three or four stitches. It's up to you or whatever the pattern calls for. You're going to do three. This is the third one. Then you remove your tatting off of that paper clip. All right. Once you remove it, you hold your chain in your pinch and you just pull on it just a little and you'll feel that Pico go up inside. Thank you, Pam. There's where you get the Ceylon thread. But you see, there's no Pico there. No Pico. It's gone. It went bye-bye. So, everybody got that? Th uh, Thursday, we've got NCARS class. Let me switch cameras now because I don't want to keep y'all tied up. Because y'all want to go trick-or-treat until your pod is. Let's see. There we go. So, any questions, folks? Any questions? Joan, I hope you were there and you got that on that dead chain. Pam, if she writes in about it, you can tell her where it's at. Okay? It's right at the tail end of the class. Hi, Pasha. Yeah, you can tap with cross stitch. You can tap with anything you want to tap with. Okay? That I do not know because I'm not, I don't tap with really small threads anymore. And I don't know the size of cross stitch floss as it is. But you can tap with it. Just know that the floss can do this. It can stretch and it can pull apart because it's it's meant for cross stitch. It's not meant for tatting. You're welcome, Linda. Thank you for coming. Thank you, Teresa. I, I don't cross stitch, so I don't know. You're welcome, Mary. So there's no questions. I know we're going to have a lot Thursdays. So I am going to send you out patterns today along with some information. Read the information first and then worry about the patterns, okay? Because we're going to do those patterns in class, but all the instructions is in it. All right, Jackie got it. Thank you, Pasha. You're welcome, Ann. Well, thank you, Marianne. I appreciate it. Everybody give it a thumbs up if it was a good class. For those of you watching it, we run on donations, strictly donation. You can do many, many different ways of helping the classes move forward. You can donate through PayPal. We have a link on our website. Or you can donate by watching the video's commercials. Let them run and we get paid pennies out of peanut. Give us a thumbs up, raise our algorithm, and we get better commercials, all right? If you get hung in a loop on a commercial, skip it, okay? That happened to Arlene. She was on the commercial for nearly an hour, and it's because it was looping. Um, so don't worry about it. 
Don't worry about it at all. If you have to skip because it's looping, skip it. But remember, we run strictly on donations. The website is not free. The equipment is not free. So, and we also do challenges. We have one coming up December 3rd, folks. And remember, the person that wins that challenge gets a $25 gift card from Handy Hands. That's if you're in the States. If you're not in the States, uh, we'll see about an Amazon or whatever country you're in, an Amazon gift card. Does that sound like a plan, folks? You haven't got commercials when replaying the class videos? I have it limited. I, I don't want to swamp you all with commercials because, Lord have mercy, they will run commercials till the cows come home. So, no questions. We got all the announcements done, and I will see you guys on Thursday. Get ready for Ann Carter's. It's going to be a fun class. Do I have a pattern for stars on the ball? No, Jackie, I have not run across one yet. I'm still working on the files. Uh, but what I would do is if you're going to put a star on the ball, the Christmas ball, tie a chain or connect it some way with a weave or something, and it'll work. Right. If you are not enrolled in the class, we're not going to send you the patterns through email. You have to enroll through the class to get the patterns through email. I cannot release some patterns on YouTube because YouTube will raise cane about copyright. As it is, I have to send them a copy of my copyright approvals from the designers. So. Yeah, I have a file knee deep to a giraffe with approvals. So there you go. Well, I guess we've got everybody's questions answered. If you're not uh, enrolled in the classes and you want patterns, uh, when we have a class, go ahead and enroll. We're not going to spam mail you. Okay, we don't spam nobody. All right, uh, we send from email dodo. You cannot respond back on email dodo. The only way you can contact us is through our email for the classes, and that's the online chatting class at gmail.com. Okay, it's in the description box below. All right, so until Thursday, y'all have a safe night. Don't let them ghouls and goblins scare you. Okay, I want to see you in class on Thursdays. So don't 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 let them scare you too bad. Uh, have a great time tonight. Enjoy with the weather if you can where you live. And until Thursday, may all your threads make beautiful lace and have a wonderful evening. And happy tatting, everybody. I'll see you guys on Thursday. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.